yesterday we got some news per Kirk Highland uh, of NBC Sports. Uh, the Lakers remain the name most often mentioned with Levine, but sources said that a trade for him is considered unlikely. So Zach Levine being traded for D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, and whatever other pieces that would be involved in a potential trade has kind of been the, the sweeping headline the last you know three weeks or so. And it makes a lot of sense from a Laker perspective, uh, his ability to just score the basketball, his ability to apply rim pressure, his ability to play off the ball, shoots 44, 45% on catch and shoot threes. That would go a long way, especially playing alongside a guy like LeBron James. Uh, his athleticism out on the perimeter. Uh, the Lakers don't have that athletic, explosive guard. Uh, the Lakers' offense just gets extremely stagnant at times, right? Uh, and having a guy in Zach Levine who you could just give the ball to and just go get a bucket, right, consistently is a big thing that the Lakers lack, right? Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell, they can get a bucket, but they have to work hard to get said bucket. It's not easy for them to just go and, you know, just blow by the defender or just shoot and elevate over the top of the defender like a Zach Levine can. And even Zach Levine, his bad games are better than D'Lo and Reeves' normal games, right? Even a bad game for Zach Levine, he's still a guy that'll go give you 15 points. Uh, there are concerns about Zach Levine, obviously his injury history, but it's like I've said, you, you can't make decisions solely on injuries, Right, because you have no predictability with that. Zach Levine had a season, the last two seasons, he's played you know seventy plus games. Right, so if he plays that for the Lakers, then the Lakers are in good shape. But he also has seasons where he's played like forty games. Right, so it's like, how do you know what he would be? And him going from, you know, a, a very heavy role to where he's one of the main pieces, his his ability to have to play. 36 minutes a game or whatever, where if you're with the Lakers, you can cut his minutes down. He's not going to be the sole guy on a team anymore. He would be, you know, the third option. On most nights, he would be the second option. But it, it also, he wouldn't have necessarily the best defensive guy on him on a regular basis with LeBron James. Or even if they do have the best defensive guy on him, uh, teams are going, they're not going to be able to send the extra defender to Zach Levine. So he's going to have to, to, he doesn't have to work as hard to score because teams are going to have to worry about Anthony Davis down low and LeBron James out on the perimeter getting a full head of steam, uh, plus all the other pieces that you would have left over. The Lakers would be fine in depth, right? I, a lot of people have concerns about just, oh, well, you know, the Lakers wouldn't have any depth. Like, depth is great when the depth is working, but it's not. <laughs> and that's, that's another issue, right? Uh, but even then, if the Lakers were able to go get a Zach Levine and an Andre Drummond, well, then you would have plenty of depth. Like, there wouldn't be any issues in that regard, right? Because you'd still have 10 guys, if not more, and you still have the buyout market. You still have other options out there. You're basically consolidating a couple guys, uh, and very likely one or two of our young guys that aren't even seeing the court right now. So you're not trading away a significant amount of depth. And the Lakers really lack that offensive firepower which Zach Levine can give you. I mean, when he's on, he can score with the best of them. I mean, this is a guy that has multiple 40-point games. You know, every other game is giving you 30, right? This guy give you 40. Like, he's constantly a threat. And you look at teams, they're not worried about D'Lo. They're not worried about Austin Reeves. Teams are okay with going one-on-one -on -one with those guys, right? They, they trust that those two aren't going to beat them. But Zach Levine can, right? And he's a tough matchup. Uh, and you have to worry so much about LeBron James. And then when LeBron has the ball in his hand, Zach Levine is still a constant threat with his athleticism, his ability to be a lob threat, his ability to be a slasher. He's an excellent slasher. Uh, his ability to, again, catch and shoot three. There's a lot of flexibility there for Zach Levine. But is it is it really unlikely that the Lakers would trade for Zach Levine? Personally, I don't really buy that. Right, there have just been so many other more reputable guys that have said like, "Hey, this is a real possibility." I don't think the Lakers are going to do the deal just to do the deal, right? Like, if Chicago's just locked in on, "Hey, we have to have Austin Reeves and we have to have a first round pick, otherwise, no Zach Levine," then in that case, I think the Lakers will just let it go. Right? The Lakers will say, "Okay, well, good luck to you." 
right? And there was even reports that, you know, DeJounte Murray uh, is a target uh, for the Lakers now. Personally, I do not believe the Lakers will be able to get DeJounte Murray. I mean, Atlanta traded three firsts and a pick swap to get Murray. The Lakers only have one tradable first and a pick swap. I just don't see them going, okay, well, we're going to sell him for a quarter of what we traded for. Or I guess you could say like, you know, a, a third, whatever, right? But unless they just are insanely valuing like a Rui or something like that. But again, I don't think the Lakers would trade Austin Reeves for DeJounte Murray. Now, maybe if there's other pieces and other deals, right? Like, so say, you know, say, um, you know, you go and you you can get a Clint Capella and like a Hunter or something like that. You know, then maybe the Lakers would be more interested in that and maybe the Lakers could give that up. But again, I just don't think the Lakers have the assets to pull that off, right? So we'll see in that regard. But to me, this is... I still lean heavily towards Zach Levine. I know a lot of people aren't super sold and a lot of people feel like I'm just like obsessed with Zach Levine. But if you watch videos, even a couple weeks ago, I was against Zach Levine because I wanted DeMar DeRozan. I thought DeMar DeRozan was the better option, but it doesn't look like Chicago is going to make him available anytime soon. And the Lakers aren't in a position to take the risks. And I don't believe Zach Levine is going to go for a first round and, and Rui and Reeves and all this stuff. I think Chicago is in a bit of a desperate state. Chicago's been playing excellent basketball since Zach Levine left, right? And I know some people look at that and go, well, why would you want somebody like that? Because it's a situation. You got to look at all of the aspects of what is going on. He has trouble with the head coach, trouble with the front office. Him and DeMar DeRozan are basically irrelevant together because they're both very similar players. They both need the ball. They both are ISO heavy, right? Yes, Zach Levine can play off the ball, and more times than not, he does with DeMar DeRozan. But even then, like he's best when you just give him the green light and you give him the ball and just let him go get buckets. Well, luckily, that's what the Lakers need, and they usually do that with a guy like Austin Reeves. I just would trust Zach Levine more to get the job done than Austin Reeves. And now if Austin Reeves goes and gives you 20, it's that much more impactful. It's not, it's about what is available, what is the cost, and what is realistic. And to me, Zach Levine checks all those boxes. I think he's the most realistic, he's available, and I just don't think he's going to cost a lot. And I just look at it as like, yes, it sucks that he's like 40 million. I don't believe he's worth 40 million, but you also aren't in a position to where you're going to be able to get like a Donovan Mitchell or something like that. If the Lakers were in a better position, I would say, wait, be patient, go get, you know, wait for Donovan Mitchell to become available or, or wait and see who else becomes available, right? Like if that was the case, but that's not the position that the Lakers are in. And I just think Zach Levine solves a lot of your issues, especially if you can get an Andre Drummond and the deal as well, then that solves, you know, two of your like three issues, Right outside of like effort, of course, but you know, I just I think it's still very likely. I wouldn't be shocked at all. Again, you never know, right? I'm not going to sit up here and say, "Oh, lock it in." You know, Zach Levine is coming to Lakers. I think it's most likely. I think if I had to bet on anybody coming, it's Zach Levine at this point. But you never know, right? And there's a lot of time between now and the trade deadline. Maybe somebody else becomes available that we're not thinking of or that we wouldn't expect to become available. And maybe that person tries to force their way to the Lakers, right? I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. But I just think regardless, the Lakers are going to have to do something. Like if the Lakers really want to try to win an NBA championship this season, they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to pull the trigger on some type of deal, some type of move to acquire just a, a guy, of whether it's Zach Levine or somebody else, or maybe it's a couple pieces, right? Maybe it isn't a superstar. Maybe it is a couple other pieces. But I just think the Lakers are going to have to do something if they want to be a real contender this year and really want to compete with, you know, the Bostons and the the Denvers and the Bucks of the world. Um, you know, if we get into the playoffs, I like our chances, right? I, I think we still are better than most teams, but I just don't think we're – one of the top four teams in the league right now, at least the way we're playing. And I just think like a guy like Zach Levine does solve and help a ton. But we'll see. Time will tell. Um, but again, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think like, yeah, uh, Zach Levine is most likely. Do you think no? It makes sense. You know, too much of a, too much of a risk, too much of a cost. 
Um, you know, Lakers need to avoid them, need to stay away. Uh, again, whatever your thoughts are, however you feel about it, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.